Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for May 29th, 2013. I'm Matt Gradwall from Uppercut Woodworks. You can find me on the web at uppercutwoodworks.com or on Twitter at uppercutwood. If you are watching the video in the chat room and you want to jump in to the chat room, head on over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chat room and log in with your Twitter ID and you can join in the chat. Um, we do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern. And we keep all the transcripts uh, on uppercutwoodworks.com, and all the videos are up on YouTube. And you can find those links up on the website as well. With me tonight, again, of course, is Mr. Chris Wong from Flair Woodworks. If an, hey, if an idea ain't crazy, it ain't his. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. He's, he's right there. <laughs> that's interesting. Right. On my screen, I'm on this side. Okay. Um, you can find me online. My website and blog is at flarewoodworks.com and follow me on Twitter and interact with me there. Uh, at flarewoodworks is how you'll find me there. Our third host tonight is uh, Scott Meek, who's fresh back from Mana, Iowa. How are you doing, Scott? I'm good. I'm tired. It was, it was a long run. No, I didn't. Well, I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about that. <laughs> No, it was it was, uh, it was a great time. So, uh, you can find me at S Meek Woodworks on Twitter, and ScottMeekWoodworks dot com is my website. Cool. So and I would have a fancy little name thing down here, but Google is uh, not liking me today. Yeah, no. Likes Chris. It's not working. Nothing's working right now. It's all good. Remember, I like this. Is my video working? My video is working. Okay. Yep. All right, so let's get started. So, Scott, why don't you tell us about uh, the show? It was called Handwork? Handworks. 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 Yes. yes, and it was the, uh, yep. And it was, uh, it was basically the, the brainchild of uh, Jamil and his brother, Father John. And if you don't know the Abrahams, then uh, it doesn't make sense that his brother's name is Father John, but he is a... A father in the Orthodox religion, I believe, and um, but anyway, they they are the the brainchild behind Benchcrafted and all the wonderful bench hardware that they they create, and they wanted to do something um, just to uh, celebrate hand tools and all the people that love hand tools. So so they put this show together and. Uh, I can tell you, they, they spent a lot of time and in, in money and sweat and tears that they put into it to make it work, and it was all a total success. So it uh, happened in Amana, Iowa, and Amana, the Amana colonies are a bunch of these old uh, businesses, I guess, that uh, they still kind of do things the way they did back in the day. And um, they got an, a furniture shop. It's all hand handcrafted furniture and that they sell right there on, on the in in the store. Uh, they've got all the old buildings. They've got uh, I guess they, from what I understand, they've got all kinds of events that happen throughout the year. Um, kind of a kind of a neat place. Uh, I was kind of I was impressed with. It. I never had heard about it beforehand, but uh, the Sounds event like the perfect place. Yeah, it, it was a great place for it. So. Uh, the event happened there, in a, like a, a big Quaker old barn. Community? Is it a Quaker community or Amish community or anything? Um, I am not sure entirely on that aspect. Okay. I'll, I do I'll know that they, that have, they have a website somewhere if we can track that down. Um, it's A-M-A-N-A -A -A in Iowa. But yeah, it was, uh, it was a good center of the country location for a lot of people. And the coolest thing was just, just the number of and quality of vendors that were there. Um, from what I understand, the last time this group of vendors, like this many top end, you know, high end hand tool vendors were in one spot was uh, WIA a few years ago. The last couple of WIAs, some of the guys have been missing. and So, um, yeah, there's guys like uh, Benchcrafted, obviously, Dave Jeske from Blue Spruce Toolworks, um, the Lost Art Press guys, um, Rainy Nelson from, from Dade Toolworks. Uh, MS Bickford was there, uh, which was, it was cool to meet that guy. Um, 
Ron Brees, fantastic playmaker. One of my, yeah. One of my heroes. And, and uh, what's that? Conrad? Uh, Conrad did not make it. He ended up having a oh, family. Conrad. He had a family uh, thing pop up at the last minute. So. So that's two events now I've been to that he was supposed to be at and he didn't show up. I have not yet getting to meet him, so I'm, I was bummed. But despite that, it was uh, it was an excellent event. It was if you like hand tools at all, uh, the, the rumor is that it's going to happen again in a couple years. Um, definitely make sure to, to be there. It is fantastic. So I would imagine I'll so, have it at the same spot. Was it just a marketplace, or what else? What, what was the what was the show about? Yeah, it was a lot like the uh, the marketplace at, at Woodworking in America, um, but it was, it was two days long, and because it was fully focused on hand tools, and it was just this big open barn, uh, there's no barriers in between the booths, so everything was just kind of out in the open. Um, it just really lent itself to uh, to the to those of us who are exhibitors um, to just have one-on-one -on -one conversations with potential customers and and just talk about hand tools and what uh, the the things that we make, um, yeah, it was just it was just kind of unique. Um, not to take anything away from the other shows, but but this one just had something going for it that wasn't like anything else that I've been to. Um, and I think it's just because it was focused on on hand tools alone. It just brought people that were that were excited about that. So great questions, great interactions, and um, I, I wish I had. I wish I had two of me so I could be there, at, uh, be there yes. as an exhibitor, but also to to talk to the other the other toolmakers and yeah, yeah. That, that's I why I felt too when I. That's yeah. a hard thing about being a one person exhibitor. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So. So, will you do the show next time it comes? Oh, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, I'll sell a kidney if I have to. And wow. it, it was, uh, I almost had to do that to get there this time. So, <laughs> but, uh, it, it was close. I wasn't able, wasn't going to be able to make it. And then, uh, someone stepped up in the last minute and, and helped me get there. So it was, it was worth every, every penny to be there. So awesome. So was it a good show for you from a business point? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, even, even if there hadn't been any sales, just the the amount of questions and people getting to to know me. Uh, this is the first you know show that I've done since the review came out here a month and a half ago in in Pop Wood. Um, so it was it was cool to continue that buzz and and so there's a uh, there's a big announcement that is coming out of it hopefully here in the next couple weeks. So for you, I'm excited. Yep. Cool. Yep. So a pretty pretty exciting opportunity that, that's going to stem out of it. All right, guys, so while you were discussing it, I did some research. Mm -hmm. The Amana colonies are often confused for the Amish, but they're not. It was founded by German Lutherans a long time ago. Um, that's right. I knew it was German. All the food in the restaurants is German. I should have. Yeah, but now it's more, um, there's an Amana corporation that um, preserves all the history, but at one point Evil all of the buildings in... Dang it all. All these evil corporations. Man. Well, it's, the corporation is owned by the people. <laughs> but all the um, all the buildings and property and stuff used to be owned communally. And they didn't import anything up until 1935. And a mana refrigeration started by that was started by them. Oh. So there you go. Little 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 research about these guys. Yeah. Something really cool that happened. I because it was uh, I had to drive the car to uh, to get out there. I didn't have room to to bring a bench of any sort with me, obviously. So I just kind of winged it and thought, well, something will something will work out. And so I got there and and talked to Jamil and and pretty much all the benches of his and anybody that he knew were were taken up and and in use. So he. Uh, he says, "Well, why don't you check the furniture store, uh, uh, the Am Amana Furniture and Box oh. Shop, and see if they've got a bench in there?" And um, actually, there's a picture of it. Somebody's got a picture of it. I think uh, Marilyn Guthrie 
took a, a, a neat picture of it on her blog. But they let me borrow this old German workbench. This thing was massive, at least eight foot long, a good solid 30, 32 inches deep, just huge and old and beat up, and it was it was awesome. It, it was the coolest bench there. Um, and you got to bring it home? No. No. I, <laughs> it uh, it would not have fit anywhere in anything. So, um, but it was it was kind of fun to have it. So. They said all, all they wanted to do was put a picture or a uh, poster on it that said provided by the Amana Furniture and Clock Shop. So, absolutely. You can put two if you want. So. I'm trying to find the picture. Uh, let me see if I can. I'm on her blog. Okay. She, sheworkswood.com. Yes. Was, was it a one-day show or a two-day show, Scott? It was a one uh, or two-day show. I'm sorry. So, yep, it was Friday and Saturday. And Friday so. we had wonderful weather. It was beautiful. I started out a little cool in the morning, but then Saturday, uh, I woke up, looked out at the hotel room, and it was rainy and cold, and um, yeah, the pictures are in in, uh, in that post about handworks. You can see my joiners on it, and I'm standing behind it. Um, kind of gives a partial view of it. Um, but yeah, on Saturday, it was cold and rainy. And I didn't. Even, I hadn't taken a long sleeve shirt. I hadn't taken a jacket or anything. I was freezing the entire day. But even with the cold and the rain, uh, Chris Schwartz and Don Williams and uh, Narayan, um I never know how to say his last name uh, from Lost Art Press. They were doing a. I think I found it, Scott. Okay. Uh, they were doing a presentation on the Studley tool chest, which was amazing. It. It was just. If you're at all interested in the, in the tool chest, in two years when this book comes out, two or three years, whatever it's going to be, it, it's going to blow everyone's mind. Um, the pictures that they shared and the information they shared was was quite awesome. Is this but it? That's it. Yep. Wow. It's not showing a picture now. It's not? It's just showing your... Uh, your little uh, avatar symbol. Okay, that's Google Plus because um, yep. I haven't changed anything. But, but that um, is a monster. Yeah, that was that was kind of neat. But um, so they uh, they were doing this presentation for the Studley Tool Chest, and there had to have been it was at least seven hundred people, probably closer to a thousand people, that were packed into that building, and a lot of them stood out in the rain in line just to to get in before the show, before the doors opened, and it was literally packed uh, shoulder to shoulder and from front to back. Actually, I think I posted a picture on my Twitter um, the morning of it, and it was before it was full. Let me look at my timeline here. Um, yeah, May 25th at 1029. So there was, there was, there was a lot of people at the show. There was a lot of people. Uh, I know 800 or 900 people signed up or registered for the show, but there, there was, right. I believe they ex they figured there was at least 1,400 people there between both days. Wow! Uh, like at least 700 and a day. That was a free to attend show too, wasn't it, Scott? Yep, free to attend. Free to attend. Yep. Yep. Scott, I think I found another picture of your of the bench here. Is that it? Uh, I see it in the little picture. It's not coming up on the on the large screen, at least for me. I don't know if it is for you, Chris. Uh, I did for a second. Um, I think Matt has to be talking. We have to click uh, click that image to bring it up in the main screen. Yeah, cl click the thumbnail. Oh, there we go. Yep. Yeah, that's that's the one. So that's the the trough side of it, obviously. But yeah, um, yeah, it was it was quite quite fun. Massive. That's and definitely cool. definitely had seen use over the years. So that's pretty cool. So they have a lot of people that showed up on day of show. Uh yeah, I believe so. Uh, I don't know if this picture is showing up. Oops, that's yeah, it's way too big. Um, this is probably forty-five minutes, half an hour before. 
the presentation is going to start. And by the time the presentation started, there's there's a stage that I that I'm standing on taking the picture, and that stage and all this empty space in front was just packed full. Uh, the stage is where Lee Nielsen was set up, um, but it was it was pretty cool. Over here on the right hand side, you can see a coffin that Mike Simpson of Mike Simpson's school <laughs> built during yeah. the show, which was uh, quite hilarious. So. There are there are pictures around somewhere of a bunch of different people getting in a coffin. So that was, <laughs> it was fun. He's got lots of good ideas, that guy. Yes, Mike. Mike being Mike, he's uh, he's a hoot. But, yeah. Well, what was the highlight of the show for you, Scott? Um. Just talking to people, it, it was, um, you know, from let's. I guess there's two highlights from uh, from a business perspective of just talking to potential customers and prior customers. I had a couple um, couple people that were that showed up that uh, have taken my plane making class. Uh, one of them was uh, Trevor Angel. He's on on Twitter, and then Justin Lieb uh, showed up as well. Um, but Trevor brought his plane that he made in in my class, and. Uh, we used it, and, and that was kind of neat. To, it was good to meet Trevor, and, and good to see his plane. Trevor even watched the, kept the held down the fort for me while I ran and and took care of business because I didn't have anyone to take. So listen, from. you're an alumni. <laughs> you're an alumni. You don't leave the bench. I got to take a potty break. Yeah, apparently he took one for the so. team too. He had he had one of those customers come up that just jabs your ear off about anything and everything, and he uh, he, I like he took that one for me. So. I, so I I'm something. curious, Scott. Yeah. How, how did Trevor's plane that he built, uh, with your, I guess, help through your class, your online class, how did his plane compare to yours in performance? I hope he doesn't start selling planes. No, he he did so a he did a he fantastic did job. He did a fantastic job. So that's great. And he, he, he tweaked his his style to fit his his hands, and it, it, it looks great and works great. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So that that says a lot both about his abilities and your abilities, Scott, as a teacher. I hope so. <laughs> or he's just really good. I don't know. But um, no, it was that was fun. And then just on you know a personal highlight for me was was just talking to the other uh, tool makers and hanging out with them, going to dinner with them, and. Um, right. I got to I got I got to talk to Ron Brees for an extended period of time, a couple different moments during you know before the shows or each day before the show or after the show, and as we packed up on the last day, and um, Ron is is a class act. What a what a great guy! And if you haven't seen his new Winter Smoother series um, of planes, they're they're just stunningly beautiful. I'll go find pictures of them. They are gorgeous. Uh, if we can get, I got, I got to talk to Ron and see if we can get him on on wood chat. Uh, that would be the next great. time we do a, yes. a plane makers chat. So, yeah. And then seeing the wow, he, those are fantastic. Yeah. The uh, the Studley presentation was pretty amazing too. Um, it, Henry Studley is com was completely bat crap crazy. The dude was yes. absolutely insane. And like Howard and, Hughes, right? Yeah, I'd like say that was pretty Howard close. Hughes. And extremely OCD, and the level of detail. Um, I'm serious. When when this book comes out, guys, just get it for the pictures, because they're mind blowing. Um, the the detail that that Narayan got into, and ah, oh, it's a it's a sexy tool chest, but the most impractical thing ever built. <laughs> they, they said they thought it would take them 30 minutes to uh, to repack yeah. the chest. They took everything out of oh. it over four hours. That's not bad. Took oh, them over okay. four hours. Okay. All right. They thought it would take 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so. That's, uh, yeah, that's crazy. I wonder how long it would take to build one. 
I would imagine. I would imagine. Are they building Everybody's a? Uh, freezing are they, on me. I would. I would imagine that they're building a reproduction, and I wonder how long that's going to take. Uh, some. I think Chris said that the first person at the show that can recreate the Studley tool chest only using tools bought at the show, get wins. <laughs> wins some prize. I think a twenty-five dollar oh, gift certificate to another tool or something. <laughs> Those tools that are in there, I don't think you can even buy them, most of them, right? Most of them are... Many of them were made by him. Made. Yeah, he made a lot of yeah. his own tools. Yeah, yeah. so it'd be, to, to reproduce the chest, you'd need to reproduce the tools as well. So. Yeah. That'd be a lot of work. Oh, I see Megan is, is tweeting, too. It, another highlight was to meet Megan again, so obviously... I, that's uh, always high on the list. <laughs> no, Megan's great. Oh, we've got her. We've got her committed for next week. She says so. Indelible ink done. She'll talk about it. She's, She's gonna, gonna come on on Wood Chat. Yeah, excellent. That's what That's she great. says. So we're gonna hold her to it. All right, I'll I'll do that. You 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 said it, Megan. You're gonna be here. Yeah. So. Don't um, let us down. Spot, do you know the photographer you're talking about is the one that Megan just tweeted about, Narayan Nayar? Yes. Okay. Um, somebody wants to know, Brad Rubin wants to know if the Studley presentation was recorded and if it'll, if it'll be available anywhere. Not that I know of. Okay. I, think it was a, I think it was a special, you made it to Handworks, here you go, here's a present. So. Um, there are some pictures, some of Ryan's pictures on um, Marilyn's page as well. That the blog post that we earlier referenced with my, with the bench that I got to borrow. So I'll try and find them here. Yeah, at the final uh, three pictures, there's the arch in Studley's chest that that uh, the number one plane is sitting in. It's this really ornate little arch. Yeah. And they got pictures. They they just focused in on the little nub that's sticking down in the middle of it, and they zoomed in on it and showed the level of detail on this little piece that's like the size of your pinky finger. And it's just it, it's freaking insane and amazing and insane. <laughs> They're just yeah 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 yep. Oh, another highlight. <clears throat> they had uh, the uh, "By Hand and I" by Jim or right. George Walker and Jim Tolpin, and it was fresh off the presses. So, people there got their copies. It's fantastic. Have you read? So far. You read the uh, first you couple. Read? First couple pages I've I've gotten through in the in my spare time. So. That's what I've been thinking about. Uh, I want to know how much it. How much it's focused on mathematics and numbers versus um, the other side, I guess, just intuition or... I don't think it's at all focused really on, I don't think, well, I guess you can call it mathematics just from a, a um, uh, geometry aspect, but from what I'm understanding in the, in the parts that I've read so far, yeah, that's the, that's the detailed picture there. Um, it's pretty amazing. But uh, that's yeah, in his tool chest. Yeah, I mean that's ridiculous. Yeah, they, I think they figured he worked on that thing literally for forty years, and it still wasn't actually finished. Which that was a little tidbit I didn't realize that that there are aspects of it that weren't finished in the tool chest. So pretty amazing. And he actually did. Was, it, was he? He was a professional woodworker. He was a professional. Um, was he a piano repairman? Piano repair. Uh, I don't know if it's piano repair. I think it was just piano making to begin with. I mean, he, he, from what I understand, he did all the guts, which was the the critical part of the piano. But um, another interesting tidbit that I didn't realize about the chest is they figure because they they re, they're researching Studley himself not just yeah. the chest. And he, uh, you know, like kind of researching his career. So his tool chest contains, I think, 
Chris said something like four different, it spans four careers, but all of those tools from, from different aspects of woodworking are all in the same chest. So a lot of the tools didn't make sense for piano making, but, and then there's some tools they don't even know what they are. And why all. somebody would use them? Yeah. So were I they handmade by, by Studley, those tools, or were they? I, I'm guessing, yeah. I, I don't know. He probably made a lot of special purpose tools. Yeah. Because he couldn't he couldn't find a place to buy them. Yeah. I mean, if if somebody was manufacturing them, they'd be able to get the records and the patents to find out what they were for. Yeah, that's a, that picture that uh, you just brought up is the tool chest empty. Yeah. As uh, as Narayan put out, they took off its clothes. Ah. It, it got a little it got a little weird <laughs> in the presentation <laughs> at this point, but. Uh, yeah. It looks heavy empty. It looks like it would be heavy empty. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. All that mahogany and ebony and ivory yeah. and living in perfect harmony and... Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Paul McCartney, man. Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's a pretty amazing tool chest. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else about the show. Um, yeah, just like just like woodwork in America, it, it, it's a great time to just get together with other other. Anytime you get together with other woodworkers, you know, fun times and potential illegal activity happens. So, <laughs> yeah. is everybody staying in one place? Uh no. Um, the one. Difficult thing is that most of the hotels are 30 minutes away from mm -hmm. um, Amana, unless you stay in the the guest house in Amana. Um, but yeah, I stayed I stayed in Coralville, which was about 30 minutes away. A lot of people stayed over there, and a lot of people stayed. Now Coralville is in Iowa City, but it's pretty much right in between uh, Iowa City and Cedar Rapids. So there's there's places to stay on in both directions. So but. maybe you could have a tent set up. Next year, uh, there are campgrounds nearby. I hear, so if you wanted to, wanted to rough it, rent an RV and drive, brother. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you can have a, a slide, a slide out, a push out work, uh, workshop. Yeah, nice, nice. Come in and grab a beer, and then hang out at the bench and try a plane. And who drinks beer? What's beer? There was no beer consumed at Woodworks this year. Yeah, I, right. Those rumors are completely false that we may have gone through just hundreds of gallons or so of beer. And instead it was... Oh, it was beer. It was lots and lots of beer. <laughs> <laughs> they just fed you beer? Uh, it was a good diet, oh. yeah. It's, it's wheat and beer. It's also, beer, um, beer and, and German food. Do they have it catered or? No. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Jamil and, and Father John did provide a, a little barbecue for all the exhibitors uh, on Thursday night. Well, after setup okay. and, and all that, so um, that was that was definitely a, a good time. Okay, but most of the food was go to local restaurants. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there's there's three uh, German food restaurants right in Amana. Amana. Um, sounds great. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I had that. We ate one of them on uh, on Saturday night. It was it was really good and really German and really filling. Um, but, but yeah, there's great restaurants in Iowa City, great restaurants in, in Cedar Rapids. So definitely good food to eat. So, did anybody have any questions in the on Twitter about the show? I'll find out. If you guys have other questions too, but I'm not sure what else to say. But it was just a really good so, time. So, what's next for you, Scott? Um, there's really not much until WIA. Okay. So just uh, making planes. So. So it's end of May. Call it June right now, and Woodworking America is October, mid October. October 18th so to 20th in Cincinnati. 
is that? Uh, how far away is that? Four. You're making four me do months, math. Five months. I don't want to do math. <laughs> Um, there is uh, a, the Lee Nelson open house happening in July. I, uh, at, as of now, I don't plan on being there, but um, that's happening up in May. So if you need a hand tool fix, that's supposed to be a good, right. good, uh, good time. Well then, uh, Matt, are you going to Woodrow in America this year? I'm going to try. Um, yeah, I'm at the point where I've been telling myself that if I'm going to go to Woodworking America, my woodworking has to pay for it, and I haven't done a lot, haven't done a lot of paid projects this year. So, yeah. but I still want to go because that's, that's, it's back to being one show, and I want to go if I can. So, yeah. I'd like to go. Uh, has to make sense cost-wise for me, and it's not going to be a business trip for me. So yeah. it's going to be out of my own pocket. So. Yeah, um, that's my my dilemma. Yeah, you can still claim it as business, right? You're you're still gonna go as a representative of of Time Warp Toolworks and Hobnob um, and yeah. where that's Shake undecided babies. at this point. Yeah, that's undecided. Maybe I'll start a Kickstarter. There you go. I send, hope you're there. Send to Chris. Yeah. Yeah. If you I gotta, if I go, I'm not gonna. If I go. I'll pay for it out of pocket and won't have the business pay for it. Yeah. But I really want the business to pay for it, and I really want the business to be able to afford it. Yeah. But it's just been totally, totally understand that. It's a little closer for me. It's only about six and a half hours, seven hours uh, uh, drive, drive for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. And Scott's, I mean, um, Matt's in the states too. I've, my my flight's gonna cost a bit more than his. Yeah. Now are you close Everybody enough? You could just drive. Way. You could just drive down to meet up with Matt, and yeah. I guess do a little road trip. We'll rent an RV. Videotape it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It could be, uh, yeah. It could be the next reality series, Woodworkers Across America. Yeah. We'll leave what? We'll leave what? September, Matt. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll leave. We'll, we'll leave right after Labor Day. Yeah. Um, so nobody's coming up with questions for the uh, Handworks event. So Chris, do you want to cover your telephone game? Right. So Scott, remember when you challenged me to design a, something to yeah kind of did the telephone game with? So my design, um, which I came up with, let's drop a. Okay. Is a table surprise, and let's find a screen share here. I'm guessing it's really straight and square, and uh, yeah, very shaker inspired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of ish. Well, I had a hard time designing this because I couldn't. I, I didn't. I didn't want to add all the normal curves and all kinds of. Crazy stuff I like to do. Let's see my screen. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Is that a yes? It just uh, just went off of it? screen share. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Um, check out the link for pictures for yourself. Um, I'm kind of. My, my idea was this, I, I'm t cutting miters and then having one piece drop through and be caught. So the tabletop is a split level. It's got one level that is sunken down by half the thickness with 45 degree cuts around the outside. It's got a, I think a six inch border around the outside. And I have put tapered legs here and a stretcher which is in a similar fashion uh, as beveled edges and it drops down. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess it'd be a kind of a writing desk. I wanted it to have ample room to get your arms sit down on the table top and right. And I guess my idea for the split level is you can put your other stuff on the perimeter without it cluttering your work surface. Yeah. 
So it seemed like a practical idea to me. Um, um, so the idea for this is for somebody else, whoever's next in line, to take this design and redraw it their way with their own modifications and the way they think it should be. And say that's Scott. So Scott will do that, and then next week we'll come back and he'll present his idea, and then Matt will take a turn. We'll go through and. I already know what I want to do. Okay, maybe Matt wants to go first. You go first, Matt. That's fine. Sure, I'll go first. I already know what I want to do. This, I'd, like to see this, I'd like to see as many people get their hand, get their hand in this as, as uh, possible. All right, so do we have any uh, rules and parameters on, on uh, like, how much you can change? I don't think so. Um, it has so to be inspired or based here. on... Yeah, um, it has to be inspired and based on, I think, that's, I think we're all, I think that's far as, that's as far as the limitations. Um, okay. Don't, don't we draw a sculpture? But, yeah. um, I think we should see a progression of some sort between the tables. So um, th there were a few people who commented on my blog who want to do it as well, so we'll get them in line as well. Um, if you're listening to the video, um, you can either comment on my blog, check it out, flarewoodworks.com slash blog. And you can leave a comment on the post. It's called Woodchat's Telephone Game Design Experiment. Or you can comment on uh, Twitter using the hashtag uh, Woodchat. Let me know. Let us know if you'd like to participate. So, so I guess we'll give it to it. We'll give it to. Matt are we? Uh, are we going to do any um, like design critique of each each level of design as, at each stage, or just kind of like question and answer? Design jam. I, on I it? think we could do. Yeah. I, I think we could do that. We can. I think it'd be valuable for each. Yeah, we, we could we could see how Matt improved my design, or and not. why, or, or not, and <laughs> or degraded well, he can it. explain what changes he did and why he felt those changes were necessary. Yeah, and then I, th I think that'll be good for everyone for for um, in the interest of design. And you do, okay. you do not need to use CAD. You do not need to use SketchUp. Hand sketches are fine. Vic, talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just did. I did CAD because I was. I felt felt more appropriate to share than my sketches. If I was going to convey an idea, I feel more comfortable conveying my ideas with other people using CAD. My sketches are for myself. Right. I'm on the same way with SketchUp and with CAD. But yeah, the the hand sketches aren't ready for prime time for me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm I'm intrigued with the uh, with the miter drop down. It's it's a neat yes. It's, it's a really cool effect. Uh, my only question is on the bottom stretcher. Obviously, there would have to be some type of serious um, joinery in that to keep everything level. Because it, I just in my mind, I'm seeing both of those side stretchers sagging. Yeah. Under the weight of that, but that's that's. Just, my curiosity. Well, that's that's part of the design challenge. Um, I'm sure you could run a bolt right through everything if you wanted to. Um, a section of all all, all thread. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's lots that could be done. Um, if you put big tenons and peg them in there, that'd probably hold as well. Probably. That would hold. Um, I, I saw that. Domino XL would right work now, right there. Maybe. Yeah. I, I think that. Yeah. Run, run it straight through. Um, I think that right now our focus should be on design rather than is this possible? Practicality. Possible okay. Yeah. And Excellent. I also built a flaw in, so you guys could improve. Built you a flaw. What? Ah. What do you mean if you like? I I didn't want to refine too much. Just what I'm trying to say. Okay. So it's meant to have fun with. So. Um, I guess, Matt, what I'll do is I'll post this on the wood chat page on Google Plus. Sure. And we'll, and we'll post each version there. Maybe on my blog, too. Maybe I'll, I'll make a page for this. I'm not sure. 
Yeah. Like I'll do that. Yeah. And we'll post the progression. Now, are you going to post the SketchUp file itself? Um, I don't have a SketchUp file. This wasn't done in SketchUp, so I don't think that'll help anybody. Uh, what, uh, what file does it save in? Because I, I believe SketchUp can convert. Is it DXF? Yeah. That, that, uh, um, CAD okay, I can have a look. Uh, the program I use is called Rhinoceros. It's um, a 3D modeling program. It's more comfortable with doing curves and sculptural things, twists. And yeah. that's why. So um, I think if I think if it can save a DXF file, you can upload the DXF file, and then people can open the DXF in SketchUp. I don't yeah. know how well it'll translate into SketchUp, but okay. um, I do know that SketchUp yeah. can okay. can open some DXF. For what it's worth. So I can export. I can export to uh, 3DM. 3ds, SAT, AI, Adobe Illustrator, um, DWG AutoCAD or DXF AutoCAD. DWG, that's um, the one. So okay, those. I can. You're the AutoCAD ones, I believe. Um, okay, so I will um, export my design in DXF, and I will, I guess, upload that file to my website, to sure. my blog on the post which I linked, and you can check it out there and. Um, now I guess one important thing to note is that... Well, I can hey, let me just let you know what I can open. 3DS... Okay. Three, <laughs> wow, it's saying import, but it's only, it's only showing uh, 3DS, DDF, out of the ones you listed, 3DS and DDF. I don't have SketchUp Pro, so I don't think it will open the DWGs and the DXFs. Oh, I wonder if they changed okay. that. I thought for sure. There were a few more I didn't mention. Um, um, I can also export to IGS, IGS, um, LWO, FBX, OBJ, STL, WRL, or VM, VRML. So, okay. um, Matt, we'll, we'll, we'll figure we'll something out. If I, if I can't open sure. it, I'll get back to you. Okay. Or I'll just do it by hand and. Okay. So uh, that's that is a pro a pro feature only. Yeah. So if someone if someone uh, uh, listening can or has SketchUp Pro, and can convert the DXF or DWG file to a SketchUp file and then uh, get it to us, that would be okay. fantastic. So. Okay. So I guess it, um, one thing that we should note is that we only want one person doing a redraw of each design. Right. So my particular table is only going to be redrawn by Matt, and then someone else is going to redraw Matt's drawing. So one person at a time, and hopefully we'll get a nice progression of designs. Yeah. yeah. That'll be really interesting. This will be fun. OK. Um, now, any ideas of how to track? This list, I've got a few names already. Um, you two. Um, Vic hasn't said yet, but I think. Can we put a okay, can we yeah. put a Google spreadsheet on the WinChat Google Plus Vic page? Uh, sure. Do you want to orchestrate that, Matt? Yeah, I'll try. I'll try and see what I can do here. Okay. Oh. So, Vic says if he can get a screenshot of it, he's in, and I can get that for him. They're on my blog already, Vic. So, um, Vic's in. Andy Brownell's in. Andy's in. Okay. Um, how about you, Megan? Maybe you want to get some of uh, the popular woodworking staff in on this. Be fun. And yeah, Megan. Yeah. I want. I want to get. get I want to get George Walker in on it. Let's see what. He... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> how about uh, Jim Tolpin too? Maybe. Yeah. Um, Matt, you can also add Greg to that list. Greg is that one of my blog readers. Okay. Okay. So, where will we be able to find that list, Matt? Don't know yet. Okay. I'll put it on the. I'm gonna try and put it on a Google Plus page. Okay, so uh, that'll be on the Woodchat Google Plus page. Yeah, that's the plan. You just make a. Uh a spreadsheet in Google Drive. That's what I'm trying to do. Cool. Cool. 
and then uh, make it editable, and people can add their own names to it if uh, if they want. Yeah. Perfect. I like edible. I like food too. Oh wait. <laughs> All right, so so next week you guys know I won't be here, right? Yep. So um, it'll be Chris out, Megan in. All right, so who am I, I going to share this with? Just everybody. We, we, get the, we get the better end of that deal, I think. So, <laughs> sorry, Chris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you don't know what I'm doing, so I'll let you have that, Scott. <laughs> um, I'll be building a I'll be building a guitar. Oh well, okay. But I still maybe, think it's a good maybe you to get there and that. Sorry, you're just Megan's just better to look at than you. Sorry, Chris. As much as I like <laughs> you, man, it's just. Uh... <laughs> Chris, what's your Gmail name again? That you want for this? My. Gmail. Uh, mm -hmm. My Gmail account would be flarewoodworks at gmail dot com. Scott, what's your Gmail? So Megan's use uh, s dot l dot construction at gmail dot com. S dot l dot construction. Yeah, I'm I'm locked into it because. Uh, Google does not allow you to transfer. It's an old Gmail address, but all my all my uh, Android phone stuff is all locked into that address. Mm. And they don't let you transfer it to a new one. Gotcha. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Megan says she has to finish a project for the October issue. Great, she can. I wonder finish. how long this will go for. I have a feeling that this um, design experiment might go on for a little while, so. Yeah. Oh, maybe we can we'll bug her in a little while. In a month, maybe. Did, did yeah. she mean that about uh, not going to be here next week or about not being able to do the design thing? That was about this, the design. Comments, questions, answers? What's Greg's last name? Woodworking nerd. Oh, is that is that who that was? Yeah. Um. um I don't know what's up my head. Um. Palmer. Yes, that's it. Okay, I just created a simple one. Let's see if it works here. <coughs> I've shared an item with you. Trying. We'll see if Google. We'll see if this works. I, so I have the document up. Good. This is what I see right here. And so, if you would like to participate, you can either notify myself or Matt or Scott. Or you can drop your name in here um, after the last name. So and the file will be shared on, on, your, on your website, correct? Um, oh, great. I try and share the I link. Can, I, I try and share the link on Google Plus, and it says a website cannot be found. <laughs> Did you make the image or the, uh, the document public? Oh, I don't know if it lets me. Let me see. Yeah, oh, it's it's private. You gotta set it to public. And how about anyone with the link? I'll just make it public. Okay. And you still have to have the link to find it, so. Ha, I already changed it. Ha <laughs> 
out. This is the honor system, folks. Don't go in there and swap names around and the other yeah, general. No, no hijinks, people. It didn't add the dang link. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Oh, Google. I'm trying to tell Google Plus to add the link, and it's not doing it right. Let me try. Let me start over. Go to share. I'm. I thank click you. Click on the click on the Google Plus image. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I type it, I put in the link. To the I mean, you know, you, you work for Microsoft, so I figured I had to. <laughs> yeah. So I here, keyed, I click, I keyed. here I click link, and then I paste it in, and now it added it this time. And there it is now, finally. Well, there you go. Excellent. So I was uh, I was just looking through um, Marilyn's blog post about handworks again, and at the bottom she has a picture of the calipers, the size, the thickness sizing calipers that. Uh, that uh, Chris and Lost Art Press had made. I think they made 50 of them, and then the first 50 people into the show on Friday got a pair of them. They're based off of a, a set that was in um, in the Studley Tool Chest. So the it, there are people lined up for at least an hour just you know to try to get in line just to look at these things. Yeah. And so I decided that the next show that I do, there will only be 50 joiner planes available. And so if you want a joiner plane at the show, you have to line up. And I, I'm hoping to have the same type of pull that Chris Schwartz has. Yeah. How, <laughs> how, many, how many planes did you have with you at the show? Uh, I don't remember. I, I remember I sharpened 13 blades, so... I guess thirteen planes. You sell them all? No. Close no, to some were my per some were my personal ones just to uh oh, just okay. to people, so um but yeah. yeah. That's still pretty cool. I did uh, I did trade one of them. I don't know if you can see in the background I've got the chisels on the on the rack back there. Uh huh. I traded for a set one of my planes for a set of uh, blue spruce chisels. Very nice. cool. So, any other tool makers that might be watching, I love trading tools. Um, so, you know, throwing that out there. <laughs> I like trading planes for unique trades, wood trades as well. So. I've got lots of that. Although shipping tends to be a bit of a chore. Yeah, you're you're a bit far away. Up in Canada land. Not just Canadian, should have a, West Coast that'd be kind of cool. The next, uh, Handworks, you should arrange to have a secret Santa. All the toolmakers gather around with the box. Get to you know, put them all in the middle and take one in. They had... Um, I forgot about this part. There, the door prizes alone, if you if you had registered previous, uh, prior to the show, you were entered to win a door prize, or one of many door prizes. Um including a Ron Brees plane, including some Ooh. MS Bickford hollows and rounds, um, some bench crafted bench hardware. Um, there was some absolutely stunning tools that you could win. Uh, some chisels from Dave Jeske, a blue, blue spruce. Um, unfortunately, if you were an exhibitor, you were not eligible to win. Oh. So a few of us decided that the next time there will be an exhibitor door prize as well. So, but uh, this was actually, this was actually the uh, the plane that I had for a door prize, uh, Mesquite and African Blackwood Smoother, which doesn't translate well at all on this video, but it is. Uh, you can see, but there's some curl. I can see the figure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm incredibly proud of this plane. Um, I don't want to sell it, but the person who won it. Um, I contacted him yesterday, uh, yesterday morning, and he didn't even make it to the show. So he didn't feel right taking a door prize for a show 
uh, from a show that he would, wasn't even there. So, yeah. um, so no, wow. I, I did because it, because he was a, a good guy. I, I gave him a two hundred fifty dollars gift certificate off any other other plane that he wants. Right. But um, so now I've got to figure out what to do with that uh, stunning plane, and I I'll think what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> nice girl. <laughs> um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up on eBay, and I'm going to auction it. But the kicker is oh, I want to donate half of the profit off of this plane to uh, to more Oklahoma. Um, oh, nice. Relief. So um, I got to get pictures of it. And I meant to do that today. I just didn't get to it. So hopefully tomorrow I'll get the pictures taken of the plane, and I'll get that post up. And I'm I'm asking you guys to spread the news about it wherever. And um, again, it's it's a stunning plane. I, I'm not ashamed to uh, to tell how. I think it may be the best plane I've made, if, if that says anything. So, um, wow. it's a great piece of mesquite, and the blackwood just really sets it off. So, that's very cool. That's very cool. Well, folks, we're at eight fifteen. We've been going for an hour. What do you think? I have one technical comment question for. Sure. Mostly for you, Matt. Um, I cannot upload a DXF file to WordPress, where I host my website. So I can't uh-huh. share it on my blog. Um, how large is the file? Um, how large is the file? The file on my screen is about this big. It's uh, <laughs> two, two, <laughs> 280 kilobytes. Okay. Okay. That'll, that'll work in email. Okay. But now, the other thing can you, you open do, a DXF? You can, you can upload it to the to your Google Drive. Okay. And share it publicly, just like I did. Okay, I can upload a, D, a DXF to Google. Yeah, so you can go to. You drive. can upload anything to Google Drive. Yeah. Okay. Right. So just go to drive.google.com and click the upload button, and then just make sure that you can share it and and then put the link. Okay. Yeah. Put the link right on the WoodChat page. Yeah, okay. Just click the link for the the, okay. the uh, document. Sure, I can do that. I can do that. Cool. Done. All right. Cool. Little tiny. All right. Well, folks, that's a wrap. Should we wrap it up? Let's wrap it up. Scott, you want to finish us off with your final thoughts of the evening? Uh, be good to one another. Thanks. That's great. All right. So, yeah. that pretty cool. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's Chris, tough to follow up. Your turn to say something profound. Jeez. Um, Support your local toolmaker. Screw. Yeah. I guess. Screws. <laughs> yeah. Uh, screws are easier to remove the nails. <laughs> All right. My deep thought for the day is whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> That's Wood Chat for nice. May 29th, 2013. Uh, we talked about the Handwork Show in Amana, Iowa. Um, and we looked at the Studley Tool Chest a little bit. And um, we kicked off our telephone game for designing a table started by Chris. Um, you can find the links to that on the Google Plus web chat. Uh, wood chat page, not web chat page. Uh, Chris won't be here That's next right. week, but Scott, you'll be here, right? I'll be here. Okay. Bar- barring a uh, asteroid hits my house or something crazy. Okay, and Megan Fitzpatrick from Popular Woodworking Magazine says she'll be here, so my fingers are crossed. We do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Head on over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chat room. Sign in with your Twitter account, and you're in wood chat. Um, and guess what? You don't have to wait till Wednesday. If you have a question or you have a project you want to show off, uh, just head on over to Twitter, tweet out your question or your comment or your project, make sure to include the hashtag WoodChat, and you're talking to everybody in WoodChat as soon as you do that. So we will see you next week, and thanks for stopping by, and good night, everybody. Say good night, Good kids. night. Good night, guys.